This plush, this goddamn plush that I made with Makeship has caused so much drama that now Keemstar and Ethan are beefing over this thing. I'm not kidding. There's a ton of coincidences that led to this point and the whole story is just wild. So let's start with the basics. Makeship is a website slash service that allows content creators to pitch plush ideas to the company where they then choose to accept you or not and you go through about a six month process for them to design and send out a sample of your plush. Once everything is finalized, you are then able to launch a campaign where you have to sell at least 200 pre-orders of the plush within a month in order for them to justify the cost of making these plushies and sending them out to people. Now, normally a month would be plenty of time to promote these plushies on my YouTube channel, but due to a channel strike that I got near the end of October that banned me from uploading for two weeks, I didn't get a chance to promote these plushies on my main YouTube channel near the beginning of the month. And even when I did get unbanned, in my first video back I wasn't able to promote them either, as the video that got struck off of YouTube had a sponsorship in it, a sponsorship that I now had to redo. And when you do a sponsored message in a video, you can't promote any other products because obviously it would take away attention from the product that I was paid to promote. Despite this lack of promotion in my YouTube videos though, around 40 loyal fans still ended up pre-ordering a plush through my promotion on Twitter and various other social media platforms. I knew that at this point we would never hit the goal and these people wouldn't get their plushies. So in order to thank them for their support, I decided to do a giveaway for $500 to one random person who bought the plush. And I made a follow-up tweet explaining how we won't reach the goal and that this is just a way to thank my fans. Around the same time, Ethan Klein made a joke about bombing the Vatican City on his podcast, which just like the NRA bomb comment from a couple months ago, I defended his right to make it because even though it's against TOS, it really shouldn't be. No one's going to bomb Vatican City because Ethan Klein told them to. God would literally never let that happen. So Ethan saw these two tweets and talked about about them on his podcast. Bobby, my boy, tweeted out, nobody is going to B-word the V-City on behalf of Ethan Klein. Stop being such snowflakes. Let him joke about B-wording the Pope. I wanted to express my gratitude to Bobby, not just for the great sound drops, but for his unyielding support. And so we realized that he's selling a plushie doll, a neckbeard plushie doll, which is pretty brave to actually put this out there, don't you think? With the neckbeard and everything. And frankly, there's nothing more than I want to cuddle up with a little bubbly doll uh, at night to comfort me, uh, neck beard and everything. And he's sold only 56 of them and he needs 200 more. He's tweeted out he doesn't think he's going to hit the goal. This is so sad. Well, I'm proud and excited to announce that day. In honor of our boy Bobox, who's the stalwart, stalwart, most loyal fan, a defender, we are committing to buying right now. Sam is processing the order. 144 Boblex plushie dolls. Let's make Let's this dream a go. reality. Woo! It's happening. Hey, my boy, Bo. And now we're gonna have 140 bobbly plushy dolls all around the office. We're gonna, who knows what we're gonna do, but it's gonna be good. I know what I'm doing with mine. This, this, what are you doing? This is why I'm watching. Why? What are you gonna do with that? Oh, oh nothing. I'm, just, I'm gonna hang it up in my room. It did it go through? So how much did I spend? Four thousand six hundred dollars on bobbly <laughs> plushy. Oh my god, so 4,000! I feel like that was a great purchase. 4,000. Jesus. Holy Send shit. Send us the receipt, would you? Let's what go to the, the website fuck? and see if it updated. Yes! Let's 201 go. sold! It's 100% funded! My boy, Bobby. Thank you for your support. Keemstar would never do this for you. In fact, I doubt he's gonna have $5,000 laying around his broke ass. And um, just remember, you're the man, bro, and uh, I will let you speak, and <laughs> I will talk about the allegations, which is that you're a totally cool dude. So what Ethan did there was like the coolest thing ever. I already knew he bought the plushies because I found out from people tweeting about it on Twitter. So my live reaction wasn't like, oh my God, because I wasn't finding out that he bought them all for the first time. But in that reaction clip and even now recording this, I'm still kind of in shock and in the sense of it being so surreal because like, what are the chances of any of this happening? The morning before this stream happened, I was really stressing out about the promotion of these plushes, super worried that people wouldn't be able to get 
get them in their hands, and that I couldn't push 200 in time for the deadline, to the point where I even asked Makeship to extend the deadline by 10 days. And then later that day, all of my stress is relieved when I find out that Ethan Klein of all people had guaranteed that these things would ship out. It was a huge weight off my shoulders, it was a super kind gesture, and it was one of the best days ever. Even though he did call me stinky. My question is, does the doll stink really bad? Fuck, dude! I'm not know, stinky! Bro, I'm saying, it looks like he smells from that. I mean, with peace and love. Maybe it's the dizzy yeah. talking. I don't want to be a dick. Stop <laughs> it doesn't look like he smells good. Am I wrong? I smell that? great. I have a scent bird sponsorship. I, asshole, I have a scent I have dude. a scent bird sponsorship. Okay, whatever. I don't want to do, I don't want to get stuck on that. <laughs> so anyway, Bobby, uh did Bobby tweet about it yet? I know he watched no, it. No, I'm on his Twitter, not yet. Bobby, come on, bro. This is big news. We spent $5,000 on your ass for a joke. passed out, man. So obviously, I was dying to tweet about this. I mean, H3H3 H3 Productions just spent over $4,000 live on his show to make my dream of having my own plush a reality. But unfortunately, I couldn't because earlier that week, I actually got locked out of my account for tweeting out this picture of my plush with a bob and the caption, on my way to fulfill Ethan's wish. So instead, I had to settle for leaving a YouTube comment, making a YouTube community post, and thanking him in the end of my last video. After my my Twitter was unlocked, I even DM'd AB from the H3 podcast to have him let Ethan know that I'm thankful. So normally, that would be the end of the story. But of course, this is Ethan Klein, and whenever he does anything, Keemstar has something to say about it. So he posted this Twitter video about my plushes. Let me get this straight, all right? My podcast, The Keemstar Show, has been exposing the H3 podcast. We've been exposing one of the hosts, Ethan Klein also known as Ethan Klein, for multiple different things. I don't even want to get into it. Or the other co-host, uh, Steel Design, also known as Hila Klein, who her clothing brand allegedly has been stealing a lot of designs. And then, of course, we have Olivia, who's on the H3 podcast for doxing people live. And then we got AB, who's trying to get an old man fired. Multiple different things that we've been covering on the Keemstar show. Salvo leaves the show. Salvo starts bullying Bo Blacks for not being able to sell his little plushie to his fans, only selling 50 units. So to get back at the Keemstar show, Ethan decides to promote Bo Blacks' plushie, selling him uh, extra 150 units. <laughs> Keemstar's literally on his timeline making conspiracy theories about why H3 bought my plushes, somehow making it about him in order to rationalize why H3 would ever do this, even though he explained earlier in the podcast that it was because of my tweet about him making the Vatican City bomb joke. This is the reality I'm living in. This is the timeline we've landed on for simply reading and documenting a five-year-long feud between two middle-aged men online. And now I'm somehow stuck in the middle with theories being made as to the true motive of Ethan funding my stuffed animals. It's a fever dream and I absolutely love it. It's like if you grew up watching Star Wars and then suddenly you're being cast in the next major mainline movie. Anyways, this surreal controversy and discussion around my plushes continued when Keemstar fleshed out his theory on Edwin's live stream. Um, so first of all, if this dude is trying to be like nice to uh, Bull Blacks or whatever, which I don't, I don't understand the angle. Does anyone understand why? The only thing I can get at is like, He's trying to, because Salvo was picking on Boblax for not selling the merch, he's buying the merch to like get back at Salvo and, and by getting back at Salvo is getting back at me. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was explaining that theory also oh, oh, before, but um, we know that Ethan doesn't really preview the content that he's fed. So is that, do you think that's all AB look, looking into everything or? I don't know. It's just weird. All I know is this. All right. Um, I am going to buy twice as many plushies as uh, Ethan, but I'm not going to sell them to my fans. I love my fans. I'm just going to give them to my fans. Like, what kind of scumbag is going to be like, oh, I'll mark this up and, like, fucking sh p pay, a pay an up price to my fans on StockX? Like, what is that? Yeah, he's going to sign Ethan and Gila. And that, that's going to, you know, make it worth it, the, the up pricing. Yeah, that's absolutely disgusting.
Yes, dude, Keem's gonna buy 300 of my plushes just to get back on Ethan. I fucking love this drama. I fucking love this drama. I fucking love my life. I love my job. And I love all the theories that are being made on why Ethan did this. Because after a couple days of thinking, Keemstar brought up a new theory about the plush acquisition on his podcast called The Keemstar Show. As a joke, because uh, Bo Blex was talking crap, I tweeted out, uh, Bo Blex hates Jews. Why? And apparently Ethan Klein was like uh, my, you know, obviously my arch nemesis um, wanted oh. to get back at me. So he bought 150 of Bo Blacks's plushies. He couldn't have splurged for more? Just 150? This is such an L for Ethan to be that pathetic. 144 Bo Blax plushie dolls. Let's make Let's this dream a go. reality. Okay, I don't really get it. I see that as like an L for Ethan because he's trying to get favoritism with money. Bull Black's Twitter versus the community or whatever his series is. He's a YouTuber that covers like dramas that go on. Twitter versus, I think, is the name of Bull Black's series. Um, you know, potentially trying to get back at me for tweeting that Bo Blex uh, hates Jew. I don't Salvo. I don't get it. Getting back at like, Salvo because do? Salvo was bullying Bo Blacks. For what not is, selling any. What is Ethan gonna do with these? He's he's planning. There's another clip where he's planning to um, upsell them to his fans and oh, walk away with copy a profit. Copy it. Okay, yeah, like no, he's no, doing he's gonna smirk. No, he's gonna resell it to his fans. Oh, so it's easier for him instead of copying it completely, making your own exactly the same. Well, you're he, just he, gonna, he you're does going to sell the actual product. He does have a history of copying um, other people's merchandise yeah, uh, yeah. or so, it being very similar. So that's the end of all of this, right? Well, no, because a couple days later, H3 talked about me again and it got really weird. Oh, Dude, those Bo Blacks plushies, man. Now that's an investment. Bobby's been talking kind of mad shit on t on Twitter and I'm like, bro, I will refund those plushies so fast. It'll make your head spin, bro. Thanks, Bobby. You sent me a really nice email talk and it was just. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, it was for super nice. He said he's always been a fan and he said he's been he's so sorry. He's been hard on us oh, that's and great. that he apologized for all of his homies, too, because I don't know. They kind of go hard, but he says they do it just for clout and it's not personal. So I thought that was that was really nice, nice of him. So there it is. Bobby's a fan and we love that for him. <laughs> now, it was really nice. So you're probably asking yourself, Bo Blacks, what was so weird about that clip? Well, it's because none of what was said in it was true. I never talked about Ethan negatively on my timeline at all outside of retweeting this Augie RFC joke. And I definitely never sent an email saying that we only went after Ethan for clout because I believe in what I say. I would never make up opinions only to get attention. That doesn't even make sense. Ethan and Keem do enough crazy shit on their own that I don't even need to say anything. It's why I've gone so popular sharing their feud while never even really giving my own personal comments on it. I guess he was joking, but the delivery was so deadpan that I had to clarify this to my audience. So I tweeted out, it's so weird how Ethan is trying to mold this fictional persona around my name, saying stuff like I'm talking mad shit on Twitter, and that I sent him emails saying sorry on behalf of me and my friends criticizing him? This never happened. He's just making random stuff up. He's trying to paint me as this crazy H3 hater that is coming to the light and reforming. This is all just over-exaggerations for the show. I've been documenting his feud with Keemstar on my YouTube in a neutral way with the occasional opinion. That's it. Ultimately, I don't mind too much about this fake version of me he's creating for his show, but I wanted to address it here so that people get that Ethan was joking and I'm not held accountable for an email I never sent. So the H3 fans got really mad at this tweet, posting it to their subreddit and posting comments such as, I can't wait to gut that plushie and wrap it around my fleshlight. Out of pocket for this one, laughing my ass off. More like they are about to be in that pocket. Charge back! Charge back that shit, Ethan. Refund that shit. Covering the Keemstar vs. Ethan feud and coming away neutral is a huge red flag. On one hand, Ethan called out Keem for encouraging a suicide, but on the other hand, Keem called out Ethan for being, checks notes, Jewish? And even worse, being fat. Something I learned a long time ago is that the idea of neutrality is usually dubious at best. By all means, if you make documentary content, laying out the facts is important. But understand that being neutral is like saying you are neutral about climate change. The science clearly points to it being real, so also preventing fringe studies that barely hold water and considering them equal to the mountain of evidence, either makes you look like an idiot or that your motive is to equate two things are equal, which tends to benefit one side more than the other. This is a really great point. By taking a neutral position, you are often taking 
one side, but not openly stating it. If I'm neutral on abolishing slavery, that means I'm pro-slavery, because I don't mind if it continues. What are these examples? How is me showing two people fighting online with no extra comment, being equated to me platforming anti-climate change rhetoric and pro-slavery rhetoric? They actually think Ethan Klein is so perfect that platforming any dissenting opinions against him is dangerous. If that take isn't biased, I don't know what is. And then we have the classic ableist comments like this one that says, well, he is autistic. Don't they have a hard time understanding when something is sarcasm? If he is autistic, it makes 100% sense why he missed the joke and took this approach. Hope Ethan doesn't go too hard on him with this knowledge in mind. Except in the tweet you showed, I did say it was a joke. And even people on the same thread are saying that they didn't get the joke, which clearly reinforces my need to make that tweet. And it wasn't even a bad tweet. It was just a clarifying tweet. Anyway, Anyways, that whole thing was fucking weird, and those reddit comments is what inspired me to make this video, but it actually continues. Because Ethan Klein is now threatening to refund his 144 Boblax plushies because I liked an Augie RFC tweet. Augie says Ethan's trying to speedrun to the second holocaust, which is really, yeah, apparently violent anti-semitism is my fault for a joke. And by the way, Boblax like this tweet. So, Bo Blacks, if you want to use uh, biblical terms, is kind of pulling a Judas on me. Why did Bo Blacks call you a liar? Bo Blacks is the liar. I want to. I never lie about Bo Blacks. Yeah, do you guys think I should refund the Bobbly Plus? She's, he's been such a douche. I swear to God, been such a douche. It was funny, but like, he makes it. Super annoying, dude. People are saying refund the plushies. I, I don't, I just, I don't believe he deserves the plushies. You know, he's been a little shit about the whole thing. He's lied about everything. And now he's liking anti-Semitic uh, tweets. People are demanding a refund. Let's do it. Flip them for profit. Yeah. But then he still gets paid. And it's, you know what I mean? Maybe, you know what would be funny? If we rip the design and then go hire like a private uh, artist to make our own Bobbly dolls so he doesn't get paid for it. And none of his fans fucking get one, but we still have them. That's what the fuck we need to do. Dude, that's what we're doing. Holy shit. We'll use the 4500 to hire a artist to make our own Bobby plushies. It's so awesome. Dude, fuck yeah. I still get the Bobby plushie. What's up now, hater? I got my own Bobby plushies. What? Now! Refund! Refund! All sales are final and non-refundable, Ethan. I'm sorry. And if you're not joking and you genuinely think I'm lying and being a little shit, I implore you to give me an example because I kind of think it's the opposite. But at the end of the day, I just think this whole thing's funny. I don't have any legitimate beef with Ethan, nor do I with Keemstar. At least from my end. I know everyone's gonna hate that take, but it's the internet. And as long as the topic isn't surrounding something serious like sexual assault, most things on this platform should just be looked at as a funny distraction to your real life. Regardless of what happens going forward, I'm still incredibly grateful for what H3 did, regardless of his intention. And I think this quote from a wise man who DM'd me this at 4am a couple years ago encapsulates this whole Ethan Klein thing perfectly. You don't give a shit, you just want to build a narrative that gets views. 